All right, in this video, we're going to walk through um, our third bullet point here is basic HTML document structure. And we're going to talk about the doc type, uh, the root HTML tag, and then the difference between the head and the body um, and the purposes they, sh they serve. So let's go ahead and jump to uh, those, those slides here. Basic HTML document structure. Uh, so the example, my first class example is going to be a worksheet you have, you've already seen before. Uh, which is going to be understanding uh, the web development series, uh, utilizing and understanding relative and absolute file paths. So we're going to walk through how to code this PDF document from scratch. And so there's a number of different HTML tags that we'll use to mark up this document. Um, let me point you to a resource that uh, will be useful uh, throughout the duration of this class. Uh, that resource is called w3schools.com. And so if you go to this URL, uh, it's going to take you to a web page that looks like what you see here. If you click on HTML reference, it's going to show you a number of different tags uh, that we can use to mark up our HTML document. Some of these tags are deprecated. They're no longer used within HTML5. Although you could still use them in your HTML document is that when you go to validate your work, uh, you'll see that it's going to ding you because you're using a tag that is no longer up to standards. So let's go and actually uh, begin to code out this HTML document. Uh, so we're going to open up Visual Studio Code. So I have that here. If you don't have the editor, make sure you download it and uh, make sure you have uh, this plugin called Open in Browser because we're going to need that to render our work in the browser. So the first thing you want to do when you create a web project is you want to create a folder, right? The first thing you want to do when you create a web project is you want to create a folder. So I'm going to create uh, a folder on my desktop. I'm going to first delete these here. I'm going to create a folder here. I'm just going to call this class example one. I just do class example for short. So that's the first thing. Uh, whenever you're creating a web project, like I said, a website is not but a, a, a folder with a bunch of files nested within it. Uh, we're going to take this folder and open it up within our editor. So we're going to go back to our explore view and there's a couple different ways you can open this folder. You can open up through file, open folder, and then go to class example, or you can go to click on this red button here and say class example and open within your editor. Uh, right now, we don't have any uh, file structure. We're going to create that. Uh, right now, you'll see that there's the welcome screen that's open. We're going to click off on that welcome screen. And then what we're going to do is begin to create our high photo structure. Uh, we're going to create a file called index.html. And that's typically what you would name uh, the home page. Uh, that's the, uh, the file that the server is going to uh, look for when, it, uh, when you host this on a server. Uh, it's going to look for a uh, index.html file and sometimes you can also name it main and some servers look for main.html as well to trigger the home page of the website and then we're going to create some folders here one is going to be an img folder like i said it doesn't matter if you name it images pictures or assets in this case i'm going to give it the acronym for img that stands for images and all my images will be located within this folder and then i'm also going to have a css folder and we'll come back in the second video. I'm sorry, in the, the video series that we that's going to be regarded that's going to be referring to cascading style sheet, and we'll talk more about CSS. But for now, I'm just going to create that folder, and uh, we'll have it there uh, for future reference. So this is our hierarchical folder structure. We only have two folders, and we have one file. And re remember, I said be careful about how you create uh, these folders and files. Uh, you're going to be so this icon here you can create a folder and this icon here you can create a a file um, and you want to make sure that you don't accidentally create a folder within a folder so like if you want if you can accidentally create a css folder with an img so just be careful of that and always try to click on this open space you'll see that this i have in my view i have this blue outline and that lets me know that i'm in the the root of this folder so let's go ahead and delete that. So I'm going to right click and just click delete. All right. So let's go ahead and actually start from here. Um, uh, and like I said, we're going to start from scratch uh, with a blank sheet. 
uh, and our file is called index.html. The very first tag you will want to put into your HTML document is one called the doc type. And I'm going to give you uh, a reference sheet of all the different tags that you're going to study for our HTML quiz. Um, I don't expect you to know all of these tags at this point, um, but I do uh, want you to practice and begin to um, uh, commit to memory some of the tags that I'm going to give you uh, in the study guide that I'll provide you with during our, our weekly session. So here's the doc type at HTML. And what the doc type does is it communicates the version of HTML that we're going to be uh, complying to. So also it communicates the rules that will or the standards that will comply to as well. And so we know that this here, whenever you see this, this basically uh, is letting us know that this is HTML5. Uh, previous versions would actually have the version number. It'll say doc type XHTML 4.01 uh, DTD and some a bunch of other stuff, right? Um, so previous versions would have the actual number within it. Uh, but if you see this, this automatically indicates that we're working with HTML5. The next immediate tag that you're going to have is called the root HTML tag. So it's going to be HTML and we have the closing tag, right? Remember that the closing tag always has the forward slash. Um, and what we're going to be doing is we're going to form a tree structure. Uh, we're building um, what we, something called the dome, the document object model. But what the dome does is, is, is that it forms this tree structure with HTML being the root node. Uh, the next two immediate uh, tags that will come is going to be the head and the body. And so the two children of HTML, the root tag, uh, let's put a comment here, is head and body. Now the head and body uh, serves two different uh, functions. The head communicates what we call the metadata of our document. So the sole purpose of the head is to communicate additional information about the HTML document. So anything that we want to give presentation to, or we want not, not presentation, but anything that we want to give visual to, we're going to body. The whole purpose of the body is to display content or display information. Again, the head is the metadata, which we're going to basically communicate additional information about the document. And then the body is what's going to display uh, content. It's going to display all of the, everything that the end user will see. So just to quickly demonstrate this here, I'll save this document here, control S to save. And let's just do a quick example here. I'm going to pull up a, a web page here and let's go to MPLS Renner. So if you want to go to uh, MPLSRenners.com. And I just want to just quickly demonstrate um, the head and the body in this basic HTML document structure. So if you right click and let's go to go to inspect. Uh, one of the things you're going to see here uh, in this document is the doc type, right? With this here communicates the version of HTML and the rules that we'll comply to. Then we have that root HTML tag, right? Um, and then the two immediate children tags of the HTML tag is head, which is our metadata, and then body, uh, which is going to be everything that you visually uh, see within the browser. Watch this here. If I were to right click and actually delete this element, we delete the whole entire web page, everything that gets visually rendered to the end user. And so the body is where all of the content that you want to visually display, uh, that's where you're going to give structure to all of your content. And like I said, the head is going to be just the more just the inf that's additional information about the document. All right, let's turn our attention back to that HTML document. And let's focus in on the head 
Uh, I want to talk about some of the text that would only go within the head of our document. Um, and then I'm going to do a part two of this video and only focus on uh, some of the text that you see within the body of our document. So let's jump back to the PowerPoint real quick. Here, uh, this is what we started to code out with this basic HTML document structure. I would say definitely refer back to this slide. Uh, this basically gives some more information about what I've already communicated. Um, but let's skip forward here. So here's a, a basic structure here that you can refer to. But here's some of the text that you would find within the head of your document. And there's only about a handful of text that you should only find. Uh, so one of them being uh, is going to be the title. And the title is going to show up within the tab of our browser. And so we're going to give this a title. What I'm going to do here is kind of put this side by side so we can actually see our HTML document along with our source code. All right. So the title here, we're just going to say understanding. I'll just copy this for the sake of time here. So I don't spend a lot of time typing. So understanding relative, uh, uh, relative and absolute file paths. That's going to be the title. And like I said, the title shows up um, inside of the browser tab. You may have noticed me putting these uh, these uh, these comments here. And that's essentially how you would actually create a comment in HTML. And so I'm just going to put a comment and say browser tab. And just to prove that that shows up in the browser tab, I want to save it. And then watch what I want to do here. I'm going to render uh, this document within the browser. So I'm going to right click and I'm going to say open in browser. And that's what uh, this extension open the browser allows us to do. Um, you could spin up a server and have it render automatically and uh, hide, uh, basically uh, reload. But uh, for our purposes, we don't need that functionality at this moment. And so what I'm going to do here is just right click and then open in, in other browsers. And I'm going to choose the browser that I want it to open in. And that's going to be Chrome. So here, if I were to take this out here, you'll see that the name understanding relative and absolute file paths is rendering within a tab of my browser. And so that's coming from line six. So quick example of how this affects uh, what the end user sees. And that's what the purpose of the title is. So let's go ahead and close that. Let's talk about a few other tags that uh, should go within the head of our web page. So if we jump back to our slide here. Uh, you will see that there's this tag called the meta tag. Uh, and what the meta tag does is it provides more specific information to um, about our document. And so you'll see that there's some tags that we can specify for keywords, uh, the description, uh, there's something called the viewport. And so uh, for every assignment in this class, for every web page you have that you can submit uh, in this class, you're going to have these five meta tags. And you're saying, Chris, where are those five meta tags you're referring to? Good question. Uh, if you go and just Google W3 meta tags, it's going to take you to a link. Uh, the first link is going to be the first thing it's going to say HTML meta tags W3 schools. If you click on that link, uh, you'll see uh, it's going to give you an example of how that meta tag is used. And these are the five meta tags that you should have on every document of your web project. And so I'm going to do is copy these here and it's okay to copy these here uh, because uh, they're meta tags and you're going to change it to alter it uh, to fit your web page. right? So go ahead and copy those meta tags. And what we're going to do here is paste those within the head of our document, because like I said, the, the whole purpose of the head of our document is to communicate information about our document. And I just move this over so we can have a, a more clear view. So on line seven, uh, what that does here is it, it it's, it's the keratin encoding of our document. It sets what 
what characters we can use within our document or we can visually render within our document. In this case, we're going to be using UTF-8. The next two here on line eight and nine has to do with something called SEO, search engine optimization. A lot of companies pay a lot of money uh, to get their site to rank high. Uh, but search engine optimization, uh, there's something called organic uh, ranking where you can uh, begin to optimize each of your pages so that uh, when those go those robots, the search engine robots crawl your website, what it's going to do is it's going to look at your descriptions, your keywords, and it's also going to analyze the content that you are going to give structure to in your body. Um, and it's going to give it a rating. Uh, against other websites to see how your site should rank uh, when search for a particular topic or um, subject or not subject but a particular topic and so like I said a lot of companies pay a lot of money uh, to and spend a lot of time uh, figuring out what the description of their, their web page is going to be and also what keywords will be symbolic to the content that's going to be displayed for that web page so in our case here um, I'm just going to go back to our page here description here so I'm going to copy that utilizing and understanding relative file paths. It's going to be our description. And here I'm just going to put two keywords and we will separate the keywords with a comma. And I'll just say relative file path. And I'll just say um, file path worksheet. All right. And like I said, you want to do your best to try to get those uh, keywords to be somewhat uh, representative of the content that's going to be displayed in that web page. For the author, I'm going to put my initial and my last name. And then uh, there's a number of other tags that you will find within the head of your web page, one being style. And we'll come back to this here, but this is where you will begin to add uh, presentation or you'll begin to add some beauty to your web page. And we're going to talk about where how we can actually include CSS. Uh, to give uh, the beauty of our website. And this here is specifically an example of internal CSS method. So we'll come back to this part here, um, but just I'm going to put that in there just to indicate that uh, one of the tags you may find within your document is called the style tag. You could use uh, the tag link uh, and the link tag we're going to do an example of this as well when we get back to when we actually go over to CSS, uh, go over CSS, but we can actually include a tag that would bring in what we call an external CS file, CSS file. And, and that's an empty or, or void element. And we talked about what an empty or void element is. And so it'd be a link and we can say href. And this is an attribute that we talked about in the previous video. And this is the syntax of an attribute. You give the name of the attribute equal and then the open and then close in quotation. In this case here, we don't have the relative file path for our, <clears throat> our external style sheet. But nonetheless, we're going to put in the attribute that's going to hold the place for where the relative file path will go. And then here uh, we can do the relationship. It's going to be equal to style sheet. And then the type is going to be equal to text slash CSS. Like I said, I don't expect you to understand all the attributes that belong to the link tag, uh, but more so uh, just understand at this moment uh, that there's a there's certain tags that belong within the head. Uh, and these are some of the tags that you would find within the head. Let me close it off. There we go. So I'm going to pause this video. Um, this is uh, going to be a little shy of 20 minutes, um, but uh, the next video we're going to get into what are some of the tags that will give structure to the content within the body of our document um, and then let me point you to a resource here that uh, will may be helpful in terms of understanding a list of all the tags that are at our disposal again if you go to w3 schools like i said it's going to be a site that i would encourage you to reference often in this class And this site has grown um, exponentially uh, since its launch. Um, 
But here, if you click on HTML reference, it's going to show you a list of tags that we can use, right? And I think I may have already mentioned this here, but I would say I would encourage you to begin to study these tags. So you've already seen me use a comment with an HTML uh, that gives you an example of how to use a comment. Uh, but this is going to be a good resource uh, to look at in terms of studying the various tags. And then also it gives you an example of how that tag is used. So I'll also provide you a study guide uh, and narrow down the various tags that you will be using. Uh, so that you can kind of focus in on the more the more commonly used tags, but nonetheless, uh, W3C is a good resource that I would say uh, re bookmark and then refer to often uh, to see how a tag is going to be used or how it could be used in your HTML document. So let me go ahead and pause this video. Um, in the next video here, uh, we're going to talk about the tags that go within the body of our document. So everything that goes in the head of our document communicates information about the page and it doesn't necessarily get rendered in a browser but in our next video here we're going to talk about how to begin to give structure to the content that the end user will see within the browser stay tuned